the Lulberts. That's our word. Brought to you by Breakaway Civilizations. Now with cancer and pedo-free 5G. And I'm here with Nick Hazelton of formerly of the uh, Anarcho Yactivist podcast. And formerly of the yeah, Yactivist with Nick. I always have to check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, am I doing it or not? Uh, I always have the intention to be working on Yacking with Nick, but I never, I just haven't getting, been getting into it uh, lately. And I'm, of course, but. Jim Jesus. Uh, so it's been a long time since you've been on the show. Uh, so we should probably do a forum update, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the last time it was maybe last year or maybe it was like right after um, New Year's or something. I don't remember, but yeah, it's been a while. So the farm's been changing, man. Um, I think last time I talked to you guys, talked to you, Jim, that we were... We, I think I was out of meat. So like the last six months, I've, I haven't had any products. So I haven't been making money. And me and the guys that I have working here with me um, have been kind of scrounging it, just trying to <laughs> make a little bit of money here and there. And oatmeal with think- berries in it. <laughs> That's I, right. I, honestly, I've been doing the same thing. I mean, it's not because I'm poverty or anything. It's just like... I'd rather spend my money on something. I actually am saving something. Up. I'm saving up for something. We'll talk about that. But uh, I was just like, you know what? I'd rather eat oatmeal than something nice if that means that I'm going to get what I'm going to be saving up for. So I'll do that. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, right, right. It's, do, I it's really kind of need, thing that... do I really need to cook myself crab? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat oatmeal and then after I'm done, I'm like, well, my belly's full. Fuck it. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> that's perfect. No, it's, that's why we love it. That's it's a great meal. Yeah, our, our thing comes down to is like, do we do we eat the nice farmer vegetables that we can get at the farmers market, or do we buy weed? You know, <laughs> that's the that's the hard thing. So, so, but we're lucky that we we make a lot of the food here on the farm, so we can and we have uh, we trade with other farmers for for different meat. You know, so we always have milk. Um, so anyway, we've got we've had some good food available, but uh, but we've been we've been trying to cut back and uh and just work on the farm so we've been fixing a lot of infrastructure stuff like i've been having pigs that have been free ranging not not by my choice but um free ranging uh, through my um my great walls my my fences they don't uh they don't doesn't keep pigs man um so i've had to pen them down i've had to put them in smaller pens and more secure and uh recently Anyway, so we've been dealing with those issues like animals getting out and fixing that kind of the things that get in our way when we're actually trying to make money with the farm. So we're trying to figure out like what's the best way to do these kinds of systems and how do we um, how do we operate smoothly as like a productive team. So there's me and two other guys, these my buddies from high school and our deal is that we if we produce the food and we take care of the farm, then that's our rent to my parents. So we live in a couple of trailers out behind the river or about behind the shed down by the river. And, uh, and now recently we've just started just making money again. You're a Matt Foley joke, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People love it. It's great. So I, always, I always throw that one in there. My, my, my a couple years Matt ago. Matt Foley and I am a motivational <laughs> speaker. Three things you should know about me. One, I am 35 years old. I am divorced. <laughs> And I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> Sorry, <I had> to. <laughs> like a couple of years ago, when I first moved down to the river in my trailer, my uncle sat me down. He's like, "Nick, I really, uh, I really got to show you these." And, <laughs> and so he played like four of them for me, and he's just laughing. I'm like, "It's, it's, it's, it's I mean, it's great. It's funny, but it's just, like, it's just so great. It's too bad." I'm sure he would have hired a real guy. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. I have cats running around behind me. Oh. And they're like hissing at each other. I got, I got a cat that's running around behind me. She Every time I do a show. Yeah, we better get on access. Every time I do a show, she's always like at the door trying to like reach inside with her paw. Because I, I have basically turned in my <laughs> walk-in closet into a recording studio. and. Nice. uh and so every time she's like trying to reach underneath the little sliding doors or try to pull the sliding doors open, but she's not strong enough to pull it open. So every once in a while, I'll just hear like a little clawing. I'm just like, go away. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm doing a show. Yeah. I'm trying to record. I'm trying to have some crispy, clean audio. And... Yeah. I don't want to get hate mail <laughs> from Michael Dean. Yeah. <laughs> God, you're making me hear about his silver sh- sh- Hubert Selby <laughs> Jr. cane again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I guess we haven't spoken since the since he quit doing the fiends. Yeah. Um, 
But anyway, I don't know. It was a good run. It was it was fun while we did it. Yep. Anyway, um, the farm update. Um, now I've got meat in the freezer. So we've been working on projects randomly and, and not really being been getting paid much. So now I've got meat. I just sold almost half of my pigs because I'm scaling out of pigs because they, they just take too much time compared to the, you know, they, Ugh. 80% of my, hold on, 20% second. of my time. Um, so <laughs> we, so, so now I have meat in the freezer and, um, and I sold about half of my pigs. I'm trying to scale out of pigs cause they're, um, they take too much time. Like the, it's the kind of 80, 20 rule principle. I always come back to this. This is a, the, the yaks make me about 80% of my profit. And it's about 20% of my time. And then pigs are 80% of my time and 20% of the profit. So I'm scaling out of them and going harder on yaks. And so I can have um, more pasture and more time for them. And uh, now that I have, I just I just butchered two bulls in February. And I got the meat back uh, late last month. So now I've been selling meat and uh, I've got some money in my pocket. And I'm I'm feeling a lot. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's it sucks when you're not making money at the thing that you're like really trying to do. You're like, gosh, do I really do I really want to do this? And I had to decide. Well, yeah, I'm invested so deep. It's gonna be like six months before I make any meat, or you know, before I get any meat back. But um, we'll, we'll <laughs> just go through it. So it's nice to be on the other end of it now. I've been like, oh, geez, now I can now I can actually decide when i want to go to town you know i don't have to budget it out and make sure like oh i'm gonna have enough money to buy this thing next month if i spend my money on gas to go to town to do whatever so it's cool man and other than that like animals are doing well it's spring season so babies are being born i've got some baby pigs we have a lot of baby goats and uh there's two yak calves so far that were born this month nice. yeah and it's and it's exciting so it's going good uh, i'm excited for spring and the grass is growing so that's that's like the most exciting thing of my life it's like <laughs> is the grass growing right now and it is grass growing and oatmeal's hot <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right <laughs> yeah uh, i i yeah like i said i've been i've been trying to save up with some money and um the reason why is because there was always two things that i wanted to do ever since i was a kid i always wanted to be on the radio doing a talk radio show check um, and it was nationally syndicated, so double check. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to, uh, and I've always wanted to have a fucking Mortal Kombat arcade cabinet in my in my house. Well, <laughs> is it those arcade one up? I don't know if you've seen these things at like Walmart. They're like three hundred bucks. And you, they have like a Pac Man one, and they have um, like Street Fighter, and you can. Ba they're basically little miniature arcade cabinets, and they come with like a few games on them depending on which one you get. Well, they, they're coming out with the Mortal Kombat one this year, and I'm like... Oh, that's sick. There we go. Childhood dream achieved, nice. so I'm going to get Mortal Kombat. It comes with one, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and Ultimate 3, and I'm like, that's settled. That's awesome. Yep. Life That'd be fun. I remember playing I remember playing Mortal Kombat, not very much, but when I was like really young, my cousins had, had a game on like... I don't even know if it was a PlayStation then. I think it might have been. Was it Mortal Kombat three? And it probably was a place. Probably, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that was the system seller, I think, for the time. Yeah, I'm. No, it was a fun game. That's things. cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. That's cool. It's it's fun when you're. It's it's interesting. Like, yeah, you have like a. I don't know. Some people are really good at this. Some people aren't. And I'm, I'm like, okay at it, I guess. Uh, but like really focusing on like, man, what, what do I want? And it's like, do I really want to eat like decent food for, 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 or like really good food for a few weeks or, or do I want to have something that's going to entertain me for years yeah. or, or be useful for years? Um, and know, it's fun, man. Ever had sushi? It's, <laughs> it's, it's really good. worth thirty dollars for a meal, uh, <laughs> or or blue crab, oh. yeah, or dungeness crab. So I don't know. I, I keep getting tempted into these things. It's like I want to save my money. Oh, dungeness crab is on sale. Well, there goes sixty bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's that's the. Uh... See, that's the worst way that capitalism goes. It's like, oh, you have too many choices. Yeah. God damn it. Or, or I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm saving some money. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be good. Oh, I can get Ardbeg ten right now, and it comes in a little tin. <laughs> oh, I love scotch. I love scotch. 
that was my thing for a while. And I'm like, all right, I got to stop with the scotch because I have like a nice little whiskey collection going on. It's like, all right, I don't even have room for more stuff. I, I can't buy any more, Jim. No more. So, yes. And it's funny because I'll buy a bottle and I'll have a few drams of it. And I'm like, that's great. Now I need another one. <laughs> it's like I barely even got a tenth way through the first one I bought. <laughs> <laughs> alone the last one <laughs> uh, but they're great um yeah but I, I want this mortal Kombat cabinet really bad like really 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 bad that and mario maker is also coming out mario maker 2 for the switch and i'm like oh i'm gonna need 60 bucks for that game too you know what? i'm just gonna start saving money and then on top of that um i went and had had to do a physical for my new job and they were like oh go ahead and step on the scale now I had done uh, a wait like uh, a month ago or a month and a half before then, and because uh, I had to do it for my job, and then it's like a uh, it's like an agency, so they sent me out to other places. And the places that they wanted me to go to, they have like really stringent rules about like who can work there, that what kind of experience they have to have, and if they do that, they uh, unless it's with been within like 30 days their insurance requires you to take another physical and take another drug screen and take another and make sure that you're up on your vaccines and everything so i was like and i was like oh yeah that was only like a month and a half ago so i have to do it again and so i went and did my physical so the first time i got weighed i was like 175 which is mm-hmm. normal for me when i'm when i'm being lazy and overweight and then <laughs> i was like and then I started noticing like some of my shirts weren't fitting anymore. And I was like, oh, I'll lose weight, whatever, oh, soon, whatever. And then they had me get on the scale and it was like 295. And I was like, ooh, I've never weighed that much in my entire life. I, okay, so I got to go on a diet. So I'm going to clean out my pantry. And after my pantry, which is almost clean out now, uh, I was like, after I clean out my pantry, I'm, I'm going to do the, the Pendulette diet for a while just to get back down to like you know the 250 range which is where i should weigh because i'm i'm really i got a lot of muscle mass and i got a lot of big bones in my like i have a big body um so when i'm fat like i don't really think about it too much because i'm just a big guy anyway it's just like oh no yeah 290 is just 290 is too much 295 that's just like holy shit so yeah i gotta lose weight so i'm gonna do the pendulette thing and i know that's not sustainable but it's enough to get me (laughs) back down to where I need to be before I start hitting that wall again where, you know, I'll eat a giant bunch of food and like an hour later I'm having hunger pains. And once I get to that point, then I'll consider another diet. Yeah. But yeah. Just need to flush my system out of all that crap that I've been eating. Lots of sodium, lots of fat, lots of carbs. It's not good. It's not, not good. And it's not a good yeah. look. <laughs> what do you, what do you typically eat? Uh, like fast food. I, I, I don't know. I love yeah. fast food a lot. Um, I, I cook a lot of like ramen. Like I'll I'll make um like they have. I don't know if you've seen these spicy ramen challenges things. Oh yeah. I eat those just for like oh, that's my lunch. <laughs> like, like this is a challenge. No, this is just good. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually for breakfast I'll make like eggs or something like that, or I'll grab something on the way home from work because I work night shift, so that's breakfast is like my dinner time. Yeah. But a lot of times I'm just like I'm trying to get to work, I'm trying to get home from work, and, and or, or I'm try, I'm at lunch at work and I don't have time to cook stuff because I'm working like twelve hour shifts, so it's just yeah. fast food, fast food, fast food. That's my that's my meal for the day, and that's not good. <laughs> it's really not <laughs> no. fucking good. And do I get the the chicken club with the side salad? No, you know I'm getting the <laughs> double burger, you know curly fries. Oh, I want to dip those in ranch. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got to stop. I've been, I've been, been doing that too much. It's just too much now. It's finally caught up with me. I was like, oh, I'll get around to dieting. I'll go back into keto soon. Nope, nope. Oh, <laughs> I got to break the glass now. This is a case of emergency. <laughs> sure. So when you, when then, when you switch to the Pendulette diet, how do you, how do, you, how do you prepare the potatoes? Because it's oh. only potatoes, right? It's oh, like no, potatoes no. and water. Okay, so the the pendulette diet is is kind of like a a a, 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 a an alteration of the nutrarian diet, nutri nutrarian diet, whatever. It's basically like mm-hmm. a like a vegetarian diet, um, okay. but they take it a step further and make it like an ultra like very low carb, very low fat, very low salt uh, diet. Um, but most people who just jump onto that thing usually fail. Because their palate isn't ready for it, you know, you're used to high salt, so when you have, like, no salt, everything tastes like nothing. 
Yeah. So, like, you have to basically retrain your palate. You got to retrain your like your body to get you ready for this kind of thing. So, w- what they what they devised for Pendulet was like, okay, we need to like basically put you into shock. You know, basically kind of mm. shake you out of you know the the rut you're in, and you can only eat potatoes for uh, for one week, and then after that you can eat like um, any kind of vegetable that's not a tuber. You know, grows in the ground um, and then you can have like uh, any kind of wheat that you uh, l- small amounts of wheat as long as it's not um, like refined grain so if it's whole whole if it's got the brand still on it then it's okay because brand has enough fiber to cancel out the uh, the, the carbohydrates mm-hmm. uh, so it's low carb low fat lo- uh, low low salt low sugar I mean extremely low calorie diet Um yeah, so for the the first week when I do potatoes, what I usually do, uh, since I can't put salt or butter or all the good things you're supposed to put on potatoes that make potatoes <laughs> terrible for you, uh, mm-hmm. what you do is you I put um, malt vinegar on them, and it's so fucking good. I just I'll just bake like a whole bag of potatoes, and then like I'll have you know one as it comes out of the oven or after after it cools down. I don't burn my mouth. Um, and then, uh, and then I'll refrigerate the rest of them so that way they're ready to go. And in case I get like, if I'm just like hungry right away, I don't have to like wait an hour for a potato to bake. You know, I can just grab one, put throw it in the microwave, put some uh, malt vinegar on it, good to go. Take a couple with me to work. You know, I can just eat them. <laughs> no problem. So yeah, that's what I do for one week, and then and then it's on to like okay, making giant salads for work. You know, I'm just putting like raw broccoli and um, romaine lettuce, or uh, what I usually get was those uh, I forget what it's called. It's like baby, not butter lettuce. It's like they sell it with the red with the red with the red leaf lettuce. I forget what it's called, but it looks like a smaller thing of romaine lettuce. What do you want? You want to come in? <laughs> Hi. I'm being interrupted. You're you're okay. You you you've already ate. You're good. <laughs> so yeah, just you know, big and then for the dressing, the only thing I really put on there is like pepper, hot sauce maybe, uh, but I have to be really careful with the hot sauce because it's got a lot of salt in it, um, and vinegar. Just no oil and vinegar. No no Italian dressing. Just vinegar. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I guess I could I could probably do the salad, but I can't imagine. They're trying to only eat potatoes for a week. Like I don't know. If, like for a, I could probably go a day. I could do a day because it'd be like oh, I don't have to eat anything today. But then the next day, I'd be like, "Fuck potatoes." Potatoes are great. Well, I'm Irish. I'd so. have to. Nah, yeah, so you get an advantage. Yeah, I'm Scandinavian. You know, I think I'd be able to get away with it. But uh, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I need more salt. I don't know. I'd be interested. To, I I don't. I'm so small. Like I'm I'm 120 pounds. I've been that way for five years and uh, I try to eat more and more and I gain muscle but I don't gain weight mm. um, I think I just get more toned or something but it just doesn't I don't know what's wrong with me but well if you're Scandinavian uh, maybe you should get some shark and bury it in the ground for a month have to, have some <laughs> yeah. is that what it's called <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> that's so gross uh, fermenting meat like I'm into making sauerkraut and all kinds of things, but fermenting meat is so sketchy to me. Yeah. Oh, well, except bacon, bacon fish, beautiful. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, curing. Yeah, yeah. That's that's smoked stuff is different. If it's salt cured, I'm I'm down. But I don't know about burying fish and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. I do oh, want to try sir strumming. I do want to try it. But I want to try it right, you know, where you have like you know the bread and the the onions and tomatoes or whatever else you put on it, and you make like that little yeah. pool out of it. I guarantee, I'm guaranteed, I'm 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 gonna like throw up tasting it, but at least I want to try it because I'm one of those people that like I'll see something disgusting and I'm like, that looks fucking gross. I have to try it. I'm one of those type of people. Like <laughs> yeah. I saw boiled peanuts at the store once and I was like, that sounds foul. I got to try it. And now I fucking love them, which that's going to be an issue going forward. Cause that's way too much salt and way too much salt. Oh yeah. <laughs> the boiled yeah. peanuts are fucking amazing. I was so wrong. I've never about had them. Like what's the difference between, I've, I love dry roasted peanuts, but what's the difference in like the texture? Uh, it's, I, don't, I wouldn't say mealy is the right word. It's 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 a lot softer. It's not like crunchy. Mm. It's hard to explain. <laughs> you you have to try. I mean, I know they sell them at Walmart. They have them in the um, 
the 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 uh, the vegetable aisle, the canned vegetable aisle. You can buy them in cans. They're pretty good. It's worth trying one. You know, tossing them in a bowl, microwaving them for a little bit, not too much, because then they'll start sticking to the insides of the shell. You know, just like a minute or two. <clears throat> And just crack them open and eat them. You can't eat the shells, obviously. Even though some of them, like the really small ones, you know, with the you know how like sometimes peanuts have like those little ones that you know have like a really thin shell. Like those ones, you can end up like just eating or just chewing on until like you know you get like a little tiny ball of fiber and you spit that part out. But for the most part, you have to crack them open and eat them like regular peanuts. But they're just different, and they're good. Wow. <laughs> I don't understand why. It, it sounds terrible. Boiled peanuts, really? It doesn't sound right. It doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does not sound right at all. Oh no. Oh no no. <sighs> I can, I've been hearing a lot of. Uh oh. That was oh. me. I don't know what happened. It just kicked me out of the room. It said, I, "Are you oh, AFK?" Yeah. So I guess huh. I gotta move my mouse occasionally. So what were you saying? I'm sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I was just talking. I just said I've I've heard of uh, peanuts or a lot about boiled peanuts recently, and then I heard the sound of the drop, and I was like, "Oh no!" But I didn't say anything, so it's perfect. Yeah. Uh. So yep. Yeah. So you had you had some uh, topics you want you wanted to talk about interdimensional pedophile <laughs> yeah. reptilians. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I mean, I listened to that Joe Rogan interview, and yeah, I've always like I've picked up Alex Jones every once in a while. Um, and I, and he's just so fucking funny. He's he's so hilarious. But uh, this one was just uh, like it, it was it was way better than the last time he was on Joe Rogan, and uh, that's probably like the best performance I've ever seen. Um, and I don't mean to say that he doesn't even like that it's, that he's doing it as a fake. You know, I don't I don't I I kind of my guess is that dude's probably schizophrenic. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And he's just totally nuts. <laughs> but it's so fun. Yeah, because the. Because, you know, it's been interesting being kind of coming from this perspective of like I was into conspiracy theories when I was into libertarianism way yep. back in the day. And uh, and now so I understand a lot of like what's going on in that sphere of like that that kind of uh, the movement or, or so to speak, you know, in those circles, I'm, I'm tapped into it a bit. And now that he's getting so much more attention and people like my friends know about Alex Jones because they all listen to Joe Rogan mm-hmm. and uh and it's just funny because because uh, people are just like, what the fuck is this dude talking about? And I'm like, I can I can like kind of keep up with it. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, <laughs> it's freaking in, 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 the, the Nazis were communicating with aliens and and uh, the breakaway. Civilization. It's just too much. But I'm going to be completely wanted, honest with you. I'm a little retarded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> Look, so, so one of the things that like we were we ended up doing a stream on my other show recording in progress which is on youtube uh and we tried to stream like some of it just to see like how far we can get into it uh and then like we kept getting hit with like copyright strikes from uh joe mm-hmm. rogan like because it's a kind of automatic id kind of strikes and it just it just cuts your stream off um but you know we got we got a lot of it into it and we were starting to notice that like what would happen is you know Alex Jones would always talk about me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 mm-hmm. I, I, I. Everything was about me, I. Even when he's talking about other things, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. um, you know, Sandy Hook is, you know, was an awful, terrible thing, and I never said, you know, or I, I wanted to say this, but I did say this, or I re- originally believed this, and I, and and you would see, um, Rogan. It's almost like I think he may have like talked to someone who had some psychiatric kind of help or whatever and maybe gave him some kind of hints because he was always trying to bring the conversation it almost seemed like deliberate like trying to bring the conversation to other topics other than himself and then alex jones would immediately start his next sentence with i again and start (laughs) like always putting yourself at like the center of everything is like one of the traits of having schizophrenia it's always always me 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 because everything is happening to me the world's Everything that's happening in the world is happening to me right. badly. That's kind of like one of the things of like paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah. It's like, and it's definitely something that he talks about it in it. Like he, he down to like, he really thinks that, you know, they're the, 
whatever the the globalists or whatever the elite is that they're messing with him and that they're trying to test him against god and and uh and that's like pretty like oh uh -oh, dude (laughs) i don't want to believe that everybody Um, everybody wants to talk about sandy hook but i want to talk about what's important and that's interdimensional pedophiles (laughs) 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 it's so wild i don't know i'm not a conspiracy theorist and I didn't say that, like, all these children didn't die. That's not what I really meant. I mean, I believed it for a bit, but I don't anymore. I mean, I'm a good guy. But let's talk about something that doesn't make me look crazy, like interdimensional <laughs> pedophiles. <laughs> like, this is... <laughs> <laughs> that live in the hollow earth that talk to fucking Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are they doing? It's... <laughs> I loved See about this, this show. He seemed... Oof. Of like how universe works, gave description and like brought it all back to it by the end. That's what I was so amazed by is like he, it's so crazy and he didn't. None of it made sense. But as they went along and along, and he kind of like if you look at the whole picture of like well, that the media is is trying to shut people down, and then they're being controlled by the globalist elite, and the globalist elite is uh, trying to break away from the civilization and and extract resources from us so that they can leave or something or they can kill us all. I don't I don't know exactly what he said there. But then it's like it comes down to they got this idea from from demons, from aliens that have been, uh, you know, that fell with, you know, he gets and then he gets into the classic kind of <laughs> Satan story of like, how did it, you know, this the archangel fell and uh, took all these other angels with him. And now that's what's uh teaching the nazis how to build space weapons and uh and now that's NASA. why they want me to shut me up and they keep talking bringing up sandy hook and i just want to talk about this <laughs> and, yeah it's like this crazy circle it always comes back to what originally was and it's just like and then rogan's yeah like, all right hold on one thing at a time alex i just want to <laughs> go with you like i believe you he's like and you know all this stuff you know <laughs> <laughs> I love that because Joe Rogan just like when he does it, he just like kind of like looks like kind of almost steps back and is like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not the only one that's crazy here. <laughs> you believe in <laughs> shit too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just so funny. But it's such, a, it's such an interesting thing to see because he – it, it, there's something so romantic about it, right? Like something pulls me in that I'm – uh, that I just love. I just love Alex Jones, and like part of me almost wants to believe it, but I'm, it's just too wild. He's too crazy, and it's just so fun. Uh, but it, it's just such an—he's such an interesting character that you like. I, I kind of like it. It makes so much more sense that he is a—that a, he's working with the, the breakaway civilizations, or he's a plant. You know, that he's the CIA plant because. <laughs> Because this doesn't make like he's just so wild. Like, how could anybody do like deal with the guy? I don't. I don't. I mean, maybe he's not like that all the time, right? No, it's it's kind of funny because he only does that when he goes on like Rogan or something like that. But occasionally, occasionally, that stuff will leak out during his main show. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this uh, YouTube channel called Vile Monkey. Mm-mm. It's. I think. I think he ended up removing most of his videos. I think he ended up putting them back up a little bit later. I think there was some, maybe perhaps some lawsuit threats going on, but I don't know. And what he would do is he would take Alex Jones clips, and he was doing this back in the day. Uh, he he since retired, um, but he would take like these clips of Alex Jones like ranting and raving about stuff. Uh, and kind of make little mashups of it so they were funny. In fact, there's like a five hour version. Basically, he's, he's made like five hours of like Alex Jones like mashups and stuff, and he put it all in one video, and it's f- fucking beautiful. Have you ever had five hours to go through? Or if you would, you could just put it like, like if you have to take a long drive somewhere, just check it out. Or if you want to listen to a podcast one of these days, just listen to that. A lot of it's kind of like repetitive. Like he, he makes mm-hmm. them repeat things over and over again just for comedic effect, but it, it works. But anyways, um, <laughs> but like, but occasionally he'll, he'll start ranting and raving about the globalists or like, Oh, you know, George Soros is awful and whatever. But then mm-hmm. like, then like he'll, he'll, he'll do things really rarely. He'll go things like, uh, he'll say things like, you know, and there's all kinds of like inter- dimensional aliens and, and stuff like that. So, <laughs> promised himself i wouldn't get into that but maybe that's for another subject another show and then he would go out like wait whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Go back. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, wait, the alien thing? <laughs> you, you, you can't just say something like that. It's like if I was just telling you the story, like, oh, yeah, you know, I was at this bar and I met some girl and she was really nice. We we're hitting it off and blah, blah, blah. And she did this and she told me about the story and blah, 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 blah. And we ordered some drinks and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then, you know, and then, you know, she she anally violated me in the bathroom. <laughs> and her, but I'm not going to get into that. Well, anyways, uh, long story short, short is like you know i really enjoyed ardbeg and it, she kind of like showed me that ardbeg is really delicious it's like wait no 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 what was i thinking about the bathroom thing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, no, don't that's worry about that interested in. don't worry about <laughs> that that's 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 another story <laughs> like, yeah. no it's not <laughs> that's the same that's, story tell me tell me about this yeah, that's valuable information that probably changed the way <laughs> that changes the whole dynamic of the story yeah. she raped you <laughs> and, the, and your moral of the story is you liked a particular brand of scotch no no <laughs> something is wrong here yeah, this this is why I I'm so fascinated by him because he's such a there's nobody I've never met or seen somebody like Alex Jones like they've met some interesting folks on the streets of Corvallis, um, mm-hmm. but really like that's just it, they they uh, they're different kind of crazy like he's more put together in a way, and uh, I don't know it just makes him intriguing because like the the there's some it's very fun and. Uh, to get into the conspiracy theories and look at like, well, what's the government doing? And and you can kind of look at when you look at these people he talks about, like George Soros and and the you know, the Council of Foreign Relations. If you look at them and you kind of like tie the the connect the dots of like, oh, there's all these people that are working together, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the Illuminati and that it's something <laughs> uh, grand and cohesive. You know, it's I doubt it, but. Mm-hmm definitely there are people that have a lot of money and have a lot of power that of are um, yeah. yeah that are doing things and not to get too much attention for it um that's a, Ooh, you had a hiccup try that again anything about like how people have overthrown governments i'm not all right let me try this let me hang up real quick and i'll come back in all right, what was that about overthrowing governments? <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Uh, I don't know much about it. I don't know what they're really doing. Like, if is George Soros funding these um, rebellions or, or whatever, pro, you know, protests? I, I'm not really sure. I haven't done the research, um, but I do think it's really interesting how connected these people are and how it tends to be, you know, s- similar and same fam or, yeah, the same families involved in politics throughout the world. Um, throughout history i think it's very interesting and that's about as far as i go because i can't like i don't know i've done i've done some crazy psychedelics i've communicated with what i think are spirits you know uh like at the time at least and uh and it's very interesting so but i I, but i can't i don't know it doesn't make sense enough for me to be able to bring back and be like yeah this is what's happening in our world it wasn't anything grand like there are interdimensional The people out to try to come molest you. Like I've never had that. <laughs> I've never had that experience, and uh, I've never really communicated with aliens that try to teach me how to make any um, superior weapons. <laughs> you know, like that's never been. Whenever I interact with these these weird but things, if you're out there, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, most of the time, yeah, yeah. but most of the time when I'm do, when I find these things, you know, on like if I'm on a lot of mushrooms and I and I meet something in my mind, you know, it's it's never something uh, spectacular like that. It's always something kind of silly and like like it comes by and like I'm tripping balls and I see something go by in the in the space time continuum that I'm looking at with my eyes closed, and it just yells, hey, "Fuck you!" as it floats by, and like that's. <laughs> that's what I get from that. And so it makes me interested when somebody takes it so far um, to say like, yeah, there's aliens communicating with people. It's, it's so intriguing, but it's just the way he talks about it is just so wild that there's just no way that, that I, anybody could believe him is how I feel. It's like, how, this is not, this yeah. is not happening. And it'd be really, really interesting if it was, but um, no, nah, dude, I don't know. I, I think that if you do as much research as Alex Jones, you could probably become as crazy as he is. But uh, I don't 
I know a lot of people that kind of um, conspiracy theorists and do the deep uh, research and they, they don't talk about that stuff. You know, maybe that's because they're CIA plants, but um, <laughs> the glow in the dark N words. Yeah. <laughs> if this was just a podcast and I didn't upload it to YouTube, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would, probably wouldn't say the right word, but I don't know if you ever followed that Terry Davis story because that's another interesting story. If you want to talk about crazy people, uh, yeah, I've never. I don't even know who Terry Davis okay. is. Okay. Story time. <laughs> glow in the dark. <laughs> So there's this uh, character he since passed away. I think he died early, like mid last year ish. I think his name was Terry A. Davis, and he was a um, uh, a programmer. And you know, like this guy was deep into programming. Like he understood like assembly language and stuff. Like he would build uh, like an operating system that you know with its own kernel, like from scratch, like 100 percent his code. Um, so like he you know he got started out like learning how to program on commodores and stuff like that and started like slowly progressing and he worked for like a few companies or whatever until he started getting visions from god and god told <laughs> him to uh build an operating system that would serve as a temple to to his kingdom and because he was like you're the greatest programmer that ever lived you need to to make this program and so he he built this operating system called Temple OS, and you can download it. It's, it exists, and it'll work with your computer, most likely. Um, but basically, it's sure. almost like kind of running like a Commodore, as you know, like, or or like a uh, you know like Apple II or, or a, you know PC IBM PC Junior, like those kinds of operating systems. But it runs on modern hardware, and. It doesn't have any kind of connectivity to any other like things that could be considered a network. So it doesn't connect to the Internet. It doesn't connect to like printers or like LAN networks or anything like that. Wi-Fi, nothing. Um, and what it is, is like it's completely like religious based. And like most of the programs on there are supposed to be like, you know, Bible verses or t like plays music or something. Um, you know, kind of, I think it's got a lot of tools in there for programming on it and, uh, a few games that are kind of really, that almost look like eighties, like renditions of what they thought video games would look like in the future. But, you know, it kind of looked like a really messed up version of, um, like the, what is it, What is that? Dire Straits out song money for nothing. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. seen that, that uh, mm -hmm. music video. Yeah. It's like really old eighties 3d rendering. Where everything looks like squares, <laughs> um, hmm. and he started doing like live streams talking about like the, these programs, and he would always like refer to people who who would insult his program as the N word, and he would always say like, "Oh, the CIA, you know, the CIA people are, are uh, they're after me or whatever." And he's like, "You could tell when they're the CIA because they glow in the dark; it makes them uh, easier to run over." And it's like, wait a minute, are, are you talking about vehicular manslaughter? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And um, he ended up... To run like, over? Yeah, he was saying, like, uh, <laughs> they glow in the dark and it makes them easier for you to run over. That's the... <laughs> that's, that's fascinating. Yeah, so... Yeah, and his out of all like after a while, his mental illness started like really started getting even worse, and he would just do live streams where he would just like inward this and inward that, and then word this. And he's like, I'm gonna run all over all these glow in the dark inwards, <laughs> and then um, he it turned out that he ended up becoming homeless. Um, he was arrested for like domestic uh, domestic violence against his 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 parents, you know, and he's mm -hmm. like an older guy, so his parents were even older. And he ended up becoming homeless and then traveling out to or uh, to Oregon and was living in the Portland area for a while. And he was uh, live streaming occasionally. And a few people started like bumping into him and started like talking to him. And and every time they would talk to him about programming, like he was very level headed. He knew exactly what he was talking about. He was very like precise in his language. He wasn't going into any kind of conspiracy theories. But you get him talking about anything else. It's like, oh, these glow in the dark N words. <laughs> run them all over. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, then later on, it turned out that he uh, committed suicide by jumping in front of a train, which is a really interesting way to do yourself in. But it's a way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And uh, that's it, it's one of those things like you th I think about these people because I know I, I, I've <clears throat> just because I'm I don't know, I like interacting with strangers and uh, and I'll and 
homeless people are just really interesting. And in Corvallis here in Oregon, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it, we're, we're known for that. The problems like Portland, San Francisco and Seattle are known for their homeless populations and mm-hmm. Corvallis isn't too far behind. Um, and it's been, it's interesting because I, I like talking to these people because when you meet them, uh, most, most of them are super, super friendly. Like they'll, they'll talk to you and they'll tell you about their family. They'll tell you about things that, about their life, why they're there. If you ask, um, and they're almost always interested in speaking to you. And you like, sometimes I wonder, like I look at these people and I'm like, well, what's like, how, why can't, why don't you just do what I'm doing? Like, why don't you just figure out how to make life work? And, uh, and it's really like, I, I, because because some of them have the full intention like if you ask them that they're like oh i'm doing this and this i'm gonna get a job here soon Uh, i've got this idea for a new business and they'll tell you all these like random things and uh and they mean it like they really seem to mean it and then you see them next week sit in the same place and you're like well how's that how's it going with that job he's like oh oh, i I, you know you know they they'll tell you an excuse and tell you why it didn't happen or why they didn't go and you know, and then, then that's what happens for, for years. So like, it's, I, I look at these people and I'm like, ah, man, I really hope that somebody like Alex Jones, who says these things and says he's so, um, interested in helping out the world or, you know, that there's, that, that they have, uh, I'd like to think at least that they have something legitimate there. But when you, it, it's cause the, for some reason the words kind of like get to me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, this guy's saying some stuff that kind of makes sense. If you look at his logical picture, but then as you, like, I found that, with anything you kind of have to reflect on it. It's like, you can't just take it at face value. That person just said some things. He sounds really nice. And, and the, the language was eloquent, but then take a step back and really look at stuff from a full bigger picture. You know, like what is this guy doing? You know, what is this guy doing with his life? Why are these things happening to him? Um, you know, if you look at Alex Jones, he doesn't have a functioning family life. Um, and and well, yeah, I mean, he forgets his, his kids names because he ate a whole bowl full of chili. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love. That. <laughs> Sorry, I ate some chili earlier. But he, like, he's a he's a multi millionaire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, it makes me wonder. Like, well, like, and it's the same thing with uh, both politicians too. It doesn't have to come from like people that are absolutely crazy. It goes in general. Mm-hmm. You know, if people they can talk. Like, even I can say all kinds of stuff. Like, I say I have the best intentions to do most things that I say I'll do. Um, and then these things I end up not doing cause I just get backtracked onto something else. But anyway, but it's, but it makes you wonder like that that's to me is like, what is really telltale about these people is it's not what they're saying. Like maybe they have a logical explanation from some point, but their premises are totally fucked, you know, like, or, <laughs> or, 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 you know, something like that. They may have a fine premise, but they just totally went off on, on this little detail. And th- that to me is like, what's super interesting about somebody like Alex Jones or Terry Davis. Uh oh, you're gone. No, I'm here. I'm here. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm messing with my audio settings. I think I think I've kind of pinpointed what, what an issue is. So yeah. All right, no worries. All right. Yeah. Well, so anyway, so so they. I what I've been interested in lately because I've been talking to more homeless people. I listened to this Alex Jones show, and uh, I've just been thinking about like, well, what's really going on with some of these crazy people? Cause I've met some schizophrenic folks that are involved in like the political movement, like anarcho capitalism and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, isn't that most and, of us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, sometimes I worry too. <laughs> no, um, I mean, the, no, but <laughs> considering the last big kind of movement that was happening in the libertarian circles outside of the alt-right was the, the flat earth thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guy that's so. been pushing that like the most, was uh who was that guy um eric july no no not eric july oh, no holy shit this wasn't eric july eric dubai eric dubai. Uh, uh, uh. it sounds the same <laughs> I don't yeah know. yeah sorry eric if you're listening <laughs> <laughs> but eric dubai like he he was uh he 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 started pushing this heavily and then he got on to Anar- anarchast with jeff berwick you know oh <laughs> jeff, yeah jeff berwick's a huge believer in it and um, oh I remember uh, the last Freedom Fest that was that I was talking to like Averins O'Brien and she was talking to a couple other dudes and they were and they were talking about how, um, you know, they were talking to, to Jeff Berwick about stuff and he started going in about like, you know, the, the flat earth thing and everybody was like, no, that's just like 
no, they're here's like this, and you can explain things through that. And they're like, and he would be like, you, you have no idea how stupid you sound trying to defend this. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? You're the flat earther here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we sound stupid. No, 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 no. Flat and, earth. <laughs> But but it's so it's so wild. Like it makes you wonder. Like some people can totally get onto something. They're totally spot on. They're like, yeah, because like, I don't. I can't think of a single thing that Jeff Merrick has said that I'm that I'm down with. I don't. I just don't know. I've had limited interactions with him online, and I'm not impressed. Um, I just don't think he is. He's not a smart guy, and he's not. No. I don't know. He's not very nice. Um, and he was getting caught up in all these little scandals where he's ripping people off for thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. And it's just like, ugh, why, why yeah. is it still a thing? Exactly. So that's one of those things where you can't really trust. Like, if you listen to his show, you're like, oh, yeah, I really like what this guy's saying because he's, he's just kind of parroting the things that people want to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. You got to look behind it. It's like, what is this dude doing? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, he's he's running scams because you can, you can find a, what a whole bunch of other people have said and you can find their stories and that's how you that's how you really figure out like it's somebody legitimate because because people will say like uh, very interesting things like i've got this this dude who's absolutely i know he's schizophrenic because i you know he's he's talked about it openly and um and he used to live around here so um but he's he was really into kind of the anarchism without objectives idea <laughs> and everything he said there i was like yeah i'm down with this i'm down with mutualism I, I i like i like the idea of um you know we don't necessarily have to have a capitalist framework for our anarchist society i'm i'm okay with that and i like the ideas that he was talking about i think he had some he had some solid philosophical points but then when he talk about anything else you're like oh yeah, this guy's communicating with Jesus uh, <laughs> with, with, through his piano, you know, and you're like, uh oh, <laughs> this guy's nuts. And then you go you know, you follow him on Instagram and he's, you know, he's going to like these weird shows like this is my favorite thing about this dude is it looks like they're in this like old school classroom. Uh, but like most of the people aren't wearing very many clothes. They all have underwear, but they're all like have weird paint. And they look like a bunch of homeless people like somehow got to rent a room and set up these the sound equipment and uh, and they were just playing really shitty music and i'm like okay this is not somebody you really want to interact with <laughs> if this is the kind of music he likes <laughs> i don't want it <laughs> just no you know i don't mind, i don't mean to judge people but it was weird it was a very weird show and it um i can't describe i wish i, I should pull up videos i should try and find this because I, I, I don't Yep. So that's that was but my point being good. is that it was hold on, it was doing pretty well until until that last bit. Okay, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, I don't most most of what I was gonna say is to get to is that you know, the people that are totally crazy and are totally wrong, um, they're right every once in a while and they can be really attractive yeah. and it's and it's interesting to see somebody like Alex Jones is really, really fun to believe in. But you look at it the rest of his life, it doesn't seem like it's very fun to be Alex Jones. Like, it, it just doesn't seem um, – he's so scared. You know, he's yeah. so paranoid of of all of these things going on. Yet they – like, if, if he was really such a problem, why wouldn't they just whack him? You know, like, they killed all these other people. Well, because he would be a martyr, right? Well what, – what, so what, what's the story behind Bill Cooper? Oh, he was a like, – he's a martyr. It's like, wait a minute. So they – they're okay with having martyrs, but they're not okay with having martyrs. Yeah. Can we click right? one? Like, would they, I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's, I just, I think it's, it's so silly. Like, if they, if they give a crap about Alex Jones, um, but they're keeping they him a, there for a reason. If they give a crap about Bill Cooper, they give a shit about uh, Alex Jones. <laughs> But I don't think they cared for – the only thing I think they really cared about Bill Cooper was he was sending, like, death threats to the uh, to the police agencies, his local police agencies, like, regularly. Like, he would get drunk and, wow. like, drunk dial them and fucking call them up and be like, fuck you, I'm going to kill all of you, you fucking – it's like, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because yeah. you would hear, like, other people on, uh, who knew Bill – and they would like show like some of the answering machine messages that he would leave, <laughs> <And it's>, like, <laughs> he would, like threaten them and stuff. It's like holy shit. His wife left him because he was an alcoholic and, a, and an abuser, and yeah, it was a mess. 
you know but if they, yeah. but hey if if this if that if the myth is true that he was murdered why did they murder bill cooper who was much bigger at the time than alex jones was but they just let alex jones go there you go go ahead get bigger and bigger the only thing we'll do yeah. is take away your twitter account <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> right you can do and that's what and and because of that it it makes it seem like he's more legitimate too right like he's like oh they're shutting him down like what isn't free speech allowable you know and that gives him a lot of attention and uh and if you look at it i mean like yeah i don't know i don't know it's it's very it's a weird situation and it doesn't really fit together to me like his picture of like how does the world and the universe work especially when it comes down to like are they are they really trying to discriminate against him i i, I mean yes they think the media is is going after him um that, that doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't deserve it but um yeah but they are definitely targeting him a bit um but the question is is like is it really legitimate or not like i don't i don't really care if alex jones is off twitter that's it's kind of not my problem i guess i do it does make me wonder like what what will happen if these platforms like i don't know it's just an experiment i guess yeah. to me as i look at it it's like well what's going to happen here like maybe we don't need the conspiracy theorist guy on every thing but uh but what's going to happen now that they've done that like what are they going to do how is twitter going to handle that in the future is, well, are there going to we, be alternatives that pop up and and gain more not really i mean i don't think so I right? mean, gab, gab exists but gab I mean, here's all you need to know about Gab, is that Gab has a Twitter account. Twitter does not have a Gab account. <laughs> yeah. And most of the time, if you ever go on th go on Gab, if you just look at what's generally being talked about, it's usually about how the Jews are terrible and how how Mexicans are awful, and how <laughs> um, you know black people are stupid. That's that's the general topics of this, and it's like overt racism, overt like Nazi imagery and stuff like that, and it's not joking around; it's serious. It's the kind of things that like you would go on and go, "Oh yeah, I forgot this exists." Like these are these people still exist, not mm -hmm. all of them, of course, but that seems to be the general like tone of all the things that are going on in Gab, which is unfortunate because there needs to be something like a Twitter alternative where they're a little bit more. Uh, open for for free speech but there again like there's a reason why all of these social media companies even before they started going down this rabbit hole that's been happening ever since you know trump got elected or whatever um was you know like we're not going to allow for overt hate speech like you can't go on there and you know with nazi flags and be serious and advocate genociding jews because if they if you allow those people onto your platform they start to take over your platform and it makes your whole platform stink and everybody looks at that and goes like i don't want to be on a platform you know where i'm going to constantly be run into this stuff and they run away so there's a reason why you don't want to have that stuff on there legitimate reasons why but um you know, if that's all of your, that that's most of your content, yeah, people aren't going to want to go to it. And that's why every time I go on Gab, I'm like, oh, what the fuck am I doing on this thing? This thing is gross. You know, even though I block yeah. people like, uh, or muted people like uh, Cantwell and Jared Howe, it's just still, still like most of the things that are being said on there. And it's just like, all right, I'm done. I deleted all my posts on there and I'm like, I'm not going to mess with this thing. This is a waste of time. Yeah. Yep. So and it sucks. Because, it's interesting. But on the other side, I mean, you have things like well, what happened after that was people like Gavin McGinnis got banned, you know. And, and there's lots of criticism that can be made of any political figure. But one thing you can't really say is that he's a Nazi. That's just fucking ridiculous. Or that the Proud Boys are Nazis. That's just fucking ridiculous. And you know, and now he's uh, and and a lot of that stuff comes from like the SPLC, who you know, if you say things that are you know, left of the center, you know, or if you have, and, and, and if you've ever talked to someone who they have on their list for whatever reason, even before they may have switched sides or whatever, like they'll just deem you a, a Nazi group. And they have like these really weird kind of like, out, like I remember they said uh, something along, like, along the lines of like the proud boys were, were, um, uh, were white nationalist group because some of them attended Charlottesville, even though like Gavin McInnes was saying like proud boys do not go to Charlottesville. This is a bad idea. Don't do it. Um, we're not, we're not Nazis. This is going to be like a Nazi event and they didn't go, but a few of them did. And because a few of them did, then they went, Oh, all of them went. 
And then the other thing that they were saying was, uh, yeah. you know, the the vast majority of them are white. It's like, well, so the United everybody who's in the United States is a Nazi because. The majority of people who live in the United States are wh- white. Like, wh- what? <laughs> what kind of reasoning is that? Well, most of you are white, so you must be a white supremacist group. It's a little ridiculous. So, like, he's suing the SPLC, and that's probably a good thing. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of his politics, for sure. Um, I, to say that he's a Nazi, I think, is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, um, I'm... I'm just kind of I'm not excited I wouldn't say that but I'm anticipating to see like what 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 changes in this culture and these like these ideas because I've I've watched the you know the libertarian and anarcho-capitalist thing very very small I think but it's definitely a corner of the internet that that does get attention and it's been fascinating to kind of grow up with looking at these ideas and trying to figure out oh let's ever since the kind of I don't what was that left left libertarianism split that's the first thing i was i was around for it was like there was a distinction between certain anarchists and certain libertarians and the left libertarians you know mm-hmm. and uh and like people like mk lords and uh and and brian sovereign like these are this is where i remember watching is like those people ended up being left libertarians and why and like what happened to the rest of this group <clears throat> and it's been interesting looking at it because then it, the alt-right kind of split off and it was like jared howe and i don't remember anybody else really um Mariah christopher Hugh, chase racial Cantwell. yeah 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 so and then it was interesting like so where did these things go and now like i don't see a whole lot of things happening like i know the free state project's going on but i don't I don't hear much from them. It definitely seems like the the former group that I was like I was paying attention to is kind of split off in different directions. And I'm kind of curious, like how does that play out in the larger culture of like, uh, well, you know, the, what's going on in the United States? Well, the the the, the far right ones made a mistake, and probably for the best, uh, they made the mistake of saying we're not going to attend any of these events that are held by these, you know, by these uh, libertarians who have minor disagreements with us. Right, and then they started get, and then the, those people left, and they started getting more radicalized to the point where they're just like it's debatable whether or not they're really libertarians. It's like, oh, they say they they agree with the non-aggression principle, but they're all for like instituting state borders and stuff because we got to yeah. be pragmatic or whatever. It's like, well, you, you're going on a, what, uh, look, if you're gonna have this this idea like, oh, we need to achieve this world where there's a non-aggression principle, but the way to achieve it is to do it through this process. That's fine. I, I don't. I, I'll disagree with you, but that's fine, right? That's that's a reasonable position. But at the same time, you can't turn around and complain that other people aren't being principled, and which is what they do constantly. And it's like, don't don't drag principles into this. If you're if you're going to like put aside principles for now because you think that it's going to help with more people achieving those principles later in the future, it's like you either be consistent with them. Or, you know, you put them aside for a bit and then you can have a debate about that stuff. That's reasonable. Yeah, but no. they don't seem to be interested in debate at all. No, no, no. From, That's why they just block people from their show and ban people. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, and the, they're, they're and basically it didn't seem at, 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 like, like many left libertarians did that. No, people no. did definitely do it, but not as much. No, no, they don't. They don't do it as much. So what had ended up happening is since all those people started leaving all of these events, like Pork Fest or whatever, the left libertarians started showing up and taking over. Which, like, sh- sure, like I like Brian Sovereign. He, you know, he's a cool guy. Mm-hmm. I definitely have some political disagreements with him, but. I, I could never see myself hanging out with people like Chase Rachels or um, Jared <laughs> Howe or Christopher Cantwell because their ideology aside, they're just awful people, just genuinely yeah. awful people in every in every way. Um, some more so than others. Rach, Rachels and, and Cantwell especially. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. But I don't you know. Whatever. They're, they they left. They they took their ball and went home. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm kind of glad that that it's not something that I really. I don't know. I worried about it like back and I was like, well, I call myself an anarchist, and and people know about Cantwell from the Sh- Charlottesville thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. Um, that, that was on my mind. But now, kind of like as I, as I, I don't know, as I watch things play out more and more, um. 
it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal now. Like it's like we we lost them and that's totally great. You know, most of us are totally that's, fine with that. I was waiting yeah. for that to happen for a long time. I wanted that to happen for a long time. So it's kind of like, <laughs> oh, thank you. Bye. Right. And then, and same thing with Molyneux, right? Like he's pretty much gone out of that, out of the, I, he, I, I don't know. People don't like calling it a movement, right? a lot about right? U, but, uh, UPB lately. That's a thing. That's happening. Know. He's trying to resurrect UPB, so. Oh. And, and he's 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 been off the Trump train for a while, though he did recently make a video, uh, a documentary about how great it would be if we had an ethno state. That's coming out soon. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I don't know, man. And it's just so something I've been studying in with philosophy is like. Like to me, like I... no. anarchist. Sorry, one more time. <laughs> All right, no worries. <laughs> I, I just want to make if, if I disconnect and reconnect, that usually fixes things for about like twenty minutes or ten Sweet. minutes or something. But anyways, go ahead. All right. Um, what I was saying is, like, I I want like because I look at these things and I and I've been I come for, at most of these things from a very philosophical perspective of like how does it affect my life is typically where I start, you know. And I, and from looking at these things, it's like at first I'm like kind of worried about like oh this political movement I'm involved in is kind of falling apart. There's people splintering off, and and I don't know exactly what's going on. But through the you know the dealing with ideas and just arguing with people, you know I've kind of stayed in the similar perspective. But I keep kind of just I just keep wanting to be less and less involved with groups. You know, like I the like I I've, I've been involved with the Libertarian Party of Oregon and. And this is another one of these things. I don't know. This is what I've been thinking about lately is people who say things to me and then I don't see it happen, you know? So this Libertarian Party folks here in Oregon, um, I I stopped interacting with them pretty much entirely because I was just – I'm tired of dealing with uh, a part – there's two parties in Oregon. One's recognized – one LP is recognized by the national LP and one's recognized by the Secretary of State and they've been beefing about it for 10 years <laughs> and uh, – they haven't done anything, but so for the first two years I was involved, it was like five years after this mess. So I'm like the first couple of years I was involved, I was like, okay, cool, we're gonna do some stuff. We're gonna get this this whole dispute settled, and then we'll have access to the ballot, and then we can start getting people elected and and you know ballots in into the state legislature. And I was interested in it, but then as time went on, I kept giving my fifty dollars a month, or I mean a year, sorry. Um, for my dues, yeah, not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have done that. But so fifty dollars a year, and uh, and I go and I participate, and uh, we'd have a fun time. And then they and and then you know they talk a big game of like, yeah, yeah, we're working on this and this and this. And then by the next meeting, I wouldn't really remember. Well, what were they working on? But I knew we were trying to just you know solve the dispute. Yet we'd still wouldn't have access to the ballot. The Secretary of State still wouldn't recognize that. And some of that might be like, yeah, the Secretary of State doesn't want to let the Libertarians get an angle in. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's part of it. Maybe the, and their their argument is that they don't want to be involved with the you know the inner workings of a political party. So anyway, but but the thing is, like these guys keep telling me like they're gonna do something with it, and and now that I've stopped paying them, they call me for their the national convention. They're like, hey, you know, we'll do all these things for you, and then I'm like, ah, sorry, man, I can't make it for it. And then they don't call me back because he like he calls me first and he's like, hey, man, we really miss you. We want you to be involved. And then I like, talk to him a little bit and it's like, hey, he's really encouraging. Wants me to be involved. And then I, I call him back because I have to tell him I, I got to check to see with my people if I can take off for the weekend to go to a na the, go to the convention. And, uh, and so I call him back later that night and I leave him a message, but I haven't heard back from him since at all. And and it, like there's no like I don't like maybe he's busy. Like I get it. You're trying to run a political party. But if you're going to call me and be like, hey, man, we really miss you. We'd love to get you to do stuff. And then I call you back like, you know, hey, I can't do it. I'm sorry. And I don't hear back. It's like, mm, that's one of those things where this guy's not really, maybe he's not really interested in getting me to go or not really interested in, in building that relationship with me, which is nothing that I want to like cast judgment on. But it fits in this thing of like, he says all this stuff. Well, what's really going on behind it? You know, what's really happening? that still the same problems over and over again with the LP. Alex Jones is still has like, you know, he's still dealing with all the same stuff. Um, 
I mean, I guess he's not really p- pitching solutions, but you know, he's still talking about the same thing, same things, and they still haven't killed him yet. And uh, <laughs> and they, you know, and these libertarians who 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 talk about yeah the non-aggression principle and and believing in these ideas, but then eventually it changes, like something happens, and their mind flips. And to me, it's just because they're interested in what's edgy. You know, they want something fun to argue about and feel like they have the superior. Um, belief that's just my psychoanalysis from looking at people like Cantwell is like they just want to be right and everybody else to be wrong so they can be angry Uh, um, and there's different different motivations for different people but that's what I see in him so I wonder about like like what's look at other people people I think the circles that we're still in like you and Jeremy and Lou and uh, people that were on the fiends and and uh, even people around the School Sucks Project. I really like the people involved with the Tragedy and Hope community. Um, and I don't want to like paint a collectivist view of people and say, like, yeah, we're all smarter than them, like, because that's what they're saying, right? And I think that's part of the problem. But I don't see us, like, I don't, man, I'm trying to stay away from us. That's, I'm trying why, to, that's I'm, why I'm always clear, like, like, I even said earlier, like, that's fine if you want to say, like, we can put aside principles for now because it's going to be important to make sure that those principles are applied across a bigger group if we actually want to live in a libertarian society. But in order to do that, we need to set aside some principles. Like, I'm perfectly fine with taking that, but uh, what's this shit about, like, me being unprincipled? Because I don't accept the non-Christian principle. It's like, you don't either right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm per- I'm perfectly reasonable, uh, like willing to listen to these ideas, and I have listened to these ideas. I've had I've listened to things that Richard Spencer has, has talked about. I've listened to things that Christopher Cantwell has talked about, and I'm just going like, this is not this is not right. <laughs> this just doesn't work. No. Right. Yeah. Right. And I explored it too. Like when it first started coming up, I'm like, well, what's going on with this? Why are all these people who you know, used to say these things that I've been saying, like, why did they switch tact all of a sudden? And I looked into it, you know, I was curious. I listened to some of Cantwell's radical agenda show and, uh, and it was, it was interesting, but yeah, I just wasn't, he's just so angry that I, I wasn't really sold. It didn't make sense. Um, the whole like eth- the ethno national thing. I just don't, I, I don't understand it when, but when they, they were talking about race and IQ and all these things that were coming out, you know, I was like generally, interested in what are they saying and so i wanted to explore it and that's from my experience the people that were really interested in exploring it explored it and did and okay yeah so he seemed angry and uh and uh it didn't make sense so his arguments that he was talking about race and iq um i got it as like well there's maybe a difference between people um but from what i look into those statistics aren't very sound um what they were using for those arguments the r the r so what was r versus K selection. There's, there's lots of different things going on in like the race realist community. Some of it is just obviously bullshit. Like the RK selection stuff. If they're talking about it in terms of a metaphor, like metaphorically speaking, let's just use RK as a metaphor for the two different types of groups. People fall into, you know, do, are they the type of people that breed a lot and then use a lot of welfare programs or are you part of this other group? That's more likely to be, you know, focus more of your attention on a few kids and then ha- provide a lot of resources for them on your own and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, that's an under, that's an understandable re- the thing to use to try to illustrate a point. But these people genuinely believe that the RK selection thing is still like a relevant thing in biology. And it hasn't been, it's been like widely refu- yeah. refuted for a while. And right. I remember Bill Whittle used to talk about this kind of a lot. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Bill Whittle. No, not really. No. Okay. Yes. He he uh, he used to be part of like PJ Media. He's like a conserv like a typical American conservative. He lives in L.A. He does a show called Trifecta with like two other conservatives. Um, he does like a, he has like a YouTube channel. He's kind of like a commentator, whatever. You know, and he used to push this RK selection theory quite a bit because he was a fan of the book written by was it the anonymous conservative. He was talking to, he wrote a book about this thing, and basically he's talking about this is a metaphor for the two different types of people, and usually these types of people vote liberals, and these type of people tend to vote, uh, you know, conservative, who are more of the K. I don't remember the RK, which one's which, anyway. Um, 
and you know, but they would say like the point at which you want to get people to do is to you know get these people who are in one group. I don't know which one is which, but let's just say they're you know let's really get the R group into the K group, and then get them to be a little bit more conservative and accept things that are more economically viable, like libertarianism or conservatism. Okay, that's fine, and that's you know that's what his whole premise is. So when Molyneux brought him on, Molyneux started actually getting in, trying to bring in like actual genetics into it, and and uh, Bill Whittle was like, oh no 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 no, this, this isn't no this this isn't real genetics we're talking about here. The RK selection theory, it's not real, it's not a real thing in humans. We're all the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's not the that's not what we're talking about. This is just a metaphor, and you can kind of tell that he was like, oh shit. That's not that's not what I wanted to be in my narrative. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, like, things like that, that's that's obviously bullshit. Or if it's being used as a metaphor, I think it's kind of point, important to point that out. I mean, like, the studies that show, like, race and IQ, I mean, that's that's real. But it's, like, what causes it? Is it all genetic? Right. Is it genetic determinism that we're talking about here? Or are we talking about just on the aggregate type things or are we talking about is it possible that there's a lot of environmental factors that come into play here and how much of those environmental factors really weigh in and even still even if we were to say that no it's completely genetic determinism if you're born african-american you're going to have a low iq and you're going to have high uh, testosterone and you're going to cause all this crime okay that's fine but none of this av like none of these things really justify having an ethno state I don't, I don't, right. I don't, I don't see how you make that that next leap over. It's like, well, here is, it's the is hot gap that we're having an issue with. Like, okay, this is what's going on. Fine. Therefore, we ought to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. How do we know that this will even work? How do we know that this is gonna, this is not gonna run into all kinds of different issues as well? We haven't had a modern ethno state, a legitimate white ethno state, unless you want to count Poland. But Poland doesn't really like enact any sort of laws. To prevent like black people or other other minorities to come into the country, the only thing that they've done recently is just say like these um, these immigrants who have been coming in from you know the well, not re immigrants uh, refugees that have been coming in from these wars in like Syria and stuff like that. They just haven't been letting them in, like the migrant crisis, which is fine. It's a fine, perfectly fine policy that any uh, any state should consider, considering that you know what the circumstances. But is that the same yeah. as having a legitimate ethno state, or are you just looking at the most whitest nation and going, "Well, this must be uh, what what an ethno state would look like"? And it's like not entirely. There's there's other factors that are going into it. There is also kind of proof to say that like pure like real ra racial homogeneity does kind of have some s sort of benefits. But to say that like that'll turn into a right wing culture is complete bullshit. I mean, a lot of these like overly white countries have like a huge huge welfare state and it's like um it's it's hurting them badly like look at what's going on in like these scandinavian countries where i think it's like one in ten people are just living on the dole and they have no reason to get ever get off the dole because they're having a very comfortable life being on the dole and it's draining their country financially and it's turning it into a shithole and then all of a sudden then they start going like oh yeah let's let in all these Let's let in all these uh, these immigrants in. You know, it'll be fine, and then it's making their uh, their their uh, their country fall apart even faster because they're sucking money from the uh, welfare state because so many people want to move there because hey, look at the benefits. Just living here, I get a a nice place to live. I got a car. <laughs> I don't have to work. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, these who exactly. nations are not perfect. They're not perfect. They have a lot of problems, and who knows if they're going to exist later on down the road. Mm. Yeah, totally. Sorry, rant over. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't see how I you're going to be like, what are you going to do? We're going to export all these people that live here into other, other places? And good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. That's not going to work. Send us. That's where with the with the alt-right there at the, the kind of the... I'm sorry, I wanted to reconnect one more time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, the the alt right really lost me at the 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 R versus K thing of like this is a genetic thing that this means that black people are going to be this way because they've come from this culture or, or from this genetics. You know, that's where I got lost. And then again with the, what you're saying with you know does that justify building an ethno state? It's like 
you know, we were we were talking about the non-aggression principle, you know, six months ago, and now we're talking about <laughs> the, the building walls Physically and, and kicking all the people. black people yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, it's like what? Hey, wait a second, you know, these people are people, and that's what kind of that's what really threw me off is is it w- trying to make the argument that people are flawed because of who they who they are, you know, and I think that it's just neglecting the 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 environmental things that you're talking about there are just so many variables that go into making somebody some way and then like the culture around you is so powerful like i don't i don't i think that it's much more likely that if if the you know if we want to look at statistics and say well you know, black poor people tend to stay black and poor, you know, tend to stay poor. Sorry. I mean, um, and, and, <laughs> that'd be and, interesting and white... if they didn't stay black. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> exactly. I was like, oops. <laughs> so, but so if you look at the statistics, you know, the, there are wait a, a lot of them colored people are turning white. <laughs> Get the hell out of this country. <laughs> Go ahead. <All> right. <laughs> but uh, so I, I think it's interesting. Like, what? There definitely is first a BET and now this. Difference. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, so there is a diff- if you look at the culture or the you look at people from these different communities. If you come from a very poor community, you tend to stay poor, and if you come from a wealthy. Um, community you're more likely to to stay wealthy right and to me when you look at these differences between you know black people and white people in the united states um what i saw a lot of people doing was making the like drawing the um seeing that there's a a correlation and then pointing that to be a causation of like wow they're different colors and that's what the statistics says so that must be what it is or different ethnic backgrounds that's that's why it's different but that doesn't like to me when i look at it it's like well no that's if you look at that that's not has nothing to do with genetics um it might have something to do with culture and I, and it probably has something to do with class but it's like the people black people in this country have a hard time because of the situation that they were thrown into you know if the through history mm-hmm. it's like that's that's my argument at least it's that uh that you know most of them were brought over their ancestors were brought over um, from their home land out of their culture and forced into a different culture that was not, um, you know, was not really set up on very many values from what I can tell. And that's, that's me talking out of my ass. I don't know what the values of, of, of that, those cultures were. And then after they came to America, I don't know, but then having, you know, that kind of subjugation, that's to me is makes more sense of like, well, why are there more, you know, why don't, I'm trying to think of how do how do I phrase this in a somewhat politically correct way, but I guess like why why do black families You're on the wrong not show if you're worried about political correctness? <laughs> so I'll just say it like but why why are black why do black uh, why why is the culture there around around these it, I don't know it's it's typically the neighborhoods right the the ghettos why aren't why don't they have functioning families you know because to me that's kind of what makes the difference is like did you have well, because a, the Jews are putting chemicals in the water to make make them. <laughs> Right, exactly. or the reptilians, or we, we have to do the David Icke, like, oh, they're not Jews, they're rep, reptiles. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but to me, that makes well argument. It's like it has to do with class and and the history of of your um, of your culture, and then you can, and that's something you can break out of, and that's why I think we see plenty of of exceptions that there are plenty successful african-american people there are plenty uh really shitty white people you know that have the worst genetics (laughs) absolutely you know i lived in a very rural area in oregon and and there are some inbred people you know that's (laughs) yeah that's the way it is those people are pretty dumb yeah if you get into the appalachians uh they're they're having a lot of the same issues that you know like a lot of black ghettos have i don't know if you've ever uh been familiar with um not not to the that extent though i don't know if you've ever read a lot of thomas soul a little bit i'm familiar with some of his stuff yeah because yeah. he wrote a really good book i highly recommend you check it out it's called um black red was it black rednecks yeah i gotta look it up now because it's gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, i think it is 
<laughs> I, I think it yeah, is black, black rednecks and white. white liberals. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Really good book. And basically like he talks a lot about how, um, uh, that like, if, if you look at like the, the early, um, af after the slaves were freed and they started being educated, um, you know, they started all of the things that, you know, that people, the negative things that people ascribe to the black culture kind of like dipped off. And they started like improving themselves. They started getting educated. They started having like actual families and households and stuff. And there wasn't a lot of single motherhood stuff going on. Um, and it really wasn't until like the civil rights era that the stuff started really kind of like breaking down again. Uh, and the reason why is because um, like the liberals were con like offering them all kinds of free stuff during the civil rights era. Like, oh, we'll give you like, you know, the great these great society deals and you can have all this stuff. And that kind of contributed to their breakdown and like um, encouraging them to uh, to uh, to like uh, start speaking in dialects that weren't, um, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to be politically correct here. You know, that weren't like Ebonics, quote unquote. Right. <laughs> so like encouraging them like, oh, that's just the way they speak and, you know, kind of belittling them and treating them like, you know, like they're just like, they're just like you know, these kind of people that are definitely underneath us, but we need to help them kind of attitude. Um, mm -hmm. And if you listen to LBJ speak, he definitely does have that attitude, especially the whole, like, I'm going to get these N words to, to vote Democrat for the next hundred years, um, which I guess Andrew Yang is doing now, right? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to get these white people voting Democrat for the next hundred years. <laughs> Hashtag gang gang. Um <laughs> <laughs> have you been have you have you been following the CN game thing? I don't know if you listened to the last episode with Miller. No, Miller. I haven't. Oh, great. Uh -uh. We'll touch on it because we already did a whole episode about it, sort of. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, so there was the definitely kind of attitude, and you know, there was kind of like an encouragement to to have all those kind of norms kind of break down for them, and encouraging like single motherhood and saying, "Oh, that's okay for them for for them to do." What it's like? No, it's it's. All of these things are not good for anybody. It's not good for society. We we live in a society. Hashtag gamers rise up, right? Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's a really good book, and it kind of goes into detail, like what what's going on with the with the with the black culture and some of the problems with it, and it really kind of does answer a lot of the questions that these ethno statists bring up, and they bring up all this stuff. But I think what's also interesting is I don't know if you're familiar with Brian Falk. Mm, no. Okay. Uh, were you ever familiar with the YouTube channel called Fringe Elements? Oh, I've heard the name definitely. Yeah, he's he's got a new YouTube channel now called The Alternative Hypothesis. Uh, him and Sean Lass used to be Spock Talk back in the day, um, but anyways, <laughs> they uh, they used to be like real big about ethno nationalism even long before like the this rise of the alt right thing came about. Like they were doing it back in like 2012. And I used to be like, what the fuck is this shit? Really? Is it, we're still talking about this stuff? <laughs> it's the current year, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but they used to talk about this stuff. And it wasn't until like early or late last year that they started going like, look, we started looking at this data again. There's no real data to support an ethno state. He's like, he's, they started looking at this thing. He's like, if you end up become like turning america into a white nation you're going to basically change the voting demographics like really on the margins it's not going to make much of a difference it's, it's and wow. they kind of abandoned their kind of their thing and they've been doing this longer than anybody even longer than cantwell even longer than jared howe or all of these people so it's kind of interesting to see them make that shift too and a lot of they have upset a lot of the alt-right people which um yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't remember the name of the video, but that was a really interesting uh, video. I think it was the one he came out with after Richard Spencer, where he outed Richard Spencer as being a fraud, but I already knew. But thanks. <laughs> 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 but it was kind of interesting to see how much of a fraud he was in detail. It's like, ooh, wow, he was really bad. But uh, yeah. Wow. Anyways, uh, was there anything else you wanted to bring up? I think there was a few things that we that you wanted to bring up um, that we didn't touch on. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about like talk about like and we can this stuff I can talk about another time too because I think that we've done pretty good and I don't want to switch topics really because I think we hit that pretty good. <laughs> okay, well we can we can touch on Yang and then we'll wrap it up. We should we should do another show soon because I want to get back into making things like roughly weekly. Yeah, Again, because I've been doing it like basically monthly, and that's 
Sure. I need to do the same thing. So the more the more shows I do like this, the more like I just like talking on the mic. So I need to I've been trying to do other people's show when people ask me because I just need to I need to do the same thing for myself, you know, because I, I like producing content and it's it's it just sucks it's when fun. you don't because people are like, hey, where are you? Where? Why haven't you been talking? And I'm like, oh, I've been talking. I just haven't been on the mic, you know, <laughs> <laughs> come on over. Help help me. Uh, help me raise these yaks and we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you all about anarcho capitalism as, as you're moving these bales of hay for me. <laughs> exactly. Help me give birth to these piglets, <laughs> these bacon seeds. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like briefly like I, i'm only in, again i need i need to preface this because i there's a lot of like retards in in, in, in anarcho capitalism <laughs> they go like oh you're supporting yang well i guess you're now a Mar maoist <laughs> i guess that that's what it means you couldn't be doing it for any other reason it's like no well <laughs> let me explain it again um yeah, so I'm only in it for the memes. I think it's kind of funny. Uh, I also think and, and the idea of like accelerationism from the the libertarian accelerationism. I have to distinguish that, not not the far right. Like, let's get a fascist state going. Um, mm. You kind of the idea of crashing the economy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, that kind of appeals to me. It's it's not really appeals to me. It's more like it's seductive, you know. And then you mm -hmm. kind of like regret it, like, oh, why, why did I sleep with her? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, she's crazy, right? You don't stick your dick in crazy. <laughs> but anyways, um, but so yeah, like he, he advocates for a UBI. He's he wants like a ten percent VAT tax. He wants to in, uh, implement all these like spending programs and uh and and while while having a universal basic income which i can see the libertarian position of like like eliminating all of the uh the welfare programs for a ubi no he wants to have it in conjunction with the current welfare state so it's going to be like mm. even fucking worse um mm -hmm. but th the memes surrounding him are are fucking beautiful and a lot of them are completely like accepting of like the accelerationism type of thing in fact the, the last one that i think i retweeted was a video of him going like i think identity politics was just put out here just to uh serve as distraction let's not talk about that right now let's just get that money and after we get that money then we could talk about whatever it is you want to talk about and it just shows him with, with the deal with the glasses and the yang hat the vaporwave yang hat <laughs> and then on the bottom of the screen it says like brought to you by the yang gang america's doomed anyway <laughs> that's funny better get that america's get your, get your bags <laughs> secure your bags <laughs> God damn. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely on board just for the memes and and the idea of just you know, kind of like a Joker type thing. You know, just want to watch the world burn kind of thing. It feels good. Mm -hmm. Seductive. Mm -hmm. Seductive. <laughs> That's great. That's a choice. I haven't heard of this guy. I'll have to check. It out. <laughs> you got it. I guess I've, now that I think of it, I've definitely seen I've seen something with Yang in it, but. Uh, yeah, a lot of vaporwave-themed memes and stuff like that, yeah. And the, the other kind of meme that goes with it is, like, the blump, which is, like, they basically replace Trump's face with, like, a baby-looking face that looks retarded. Like a retarded baby's <laughs> face. <laughs> but but a lot of people who voted for Trump are, like, upset with Trump because he didn't do what they thought he was going to do, and he kind of backpedaled on a lot of things. Um, and they were like, you know, basically this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to get a president like him and he fucking blew it. So fuck it. Let's just burn it down to the ground. <laughs> like, I'm down with burning the state down. I don't know if it's going to be in the end good, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to vote for the guy. I'm not going to register as a Democrat. That's sure as fuck not happening. Um, but I don't know. It should be interesting. I'm gonna get my Yang Gang hat. I definitely want my vaporwave hat for sure. <laughs> I just I just looked up I just looked up Yang Gang and it says that there's a so there's Andrew Yang that, that all the news feed, but then Wikipedia comes up with Yang Gang as a, <laughs> is a, as it was an supposedly an actual uh, Chinese politician who was the uh, well. A deputy director of the General Administration of Quality Supervision, Inspection, and Quarantine, and that he was in office from 2010 to 
to 2013. So this is a guy actually named Yang Gang. Oh yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> if you look <laughs> so anyway, on Twitter, sorry, that's if you, funny. If you look on Twitter for hashtag Yang Gang, you'll you'll find plenty of great stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of great memes on there. I think my favorite one, one of my favorite ones was the um, the Bart Simpson one, you know, where he's in class. They're like, say the line. And everybody's wearing a Yang Gang hat. And they show like a little crying <laughs> Trump guy. And he's like, you're going to turn this country into Venezuela. This is just so, it's literally communism. And everybody's like, ha ha, cuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, there's some great stuff coming out of that. Great memes coming out of the Yang Gang stuff. I'm loving every minute of it. Hashtag oh, that's, Yang that's Gang, awesome. Yang Gang twenty twenty. Get secure your bag, etc. Thousand dollars. Trump said he was gonna build a wall. He didn't deliver a wall. Yang said he's gonna give you a thousand dollars. You better secure your bag. <laughs> All right, so where could they find more about your stuff? And we definitely got to schedule another right. show because I, I definitely want to do more shows. All right, cool. We'll do it. Um, uh, what? Yakin with? I can I have a Libsyn account, so I think it's just yakin But you can find it on iTunes, Google Play, um, Yakin with Nick. There's and some old Podbean. episodes up. It's on Podbean. Is it on Podbean? It's all. I heard it's on Podbean, and what, you know what's great about Podbean is that you can support the Lulberts on Podbean, like Patreon, and you can get exclusive content. Oh, that wasn't a shameless plug. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you can find that, and then I have a Patreon too. That's uh, just yakking. Um, that's how you find most of it. If you look up Nick Hazelton with the X in it, you'll find all my stuff. I've got the farm website, the, the podcast. If you look up Yak with Nick or Nick Hazelton Yaks, you'll you'll find it on any of those uh, search engines. Awesome. Cool. Thank awesome. you for having me on. Yeah, anytime. A worm. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you knew, but we're taking it back. Worms. We're taking it back. Worms. <laughs> we're taking it back. Worms. <laughs> yeah, yeah.